Okay, so by way of background, I'm an MS physician, not an ALS physician, but I can speak to it with some degree of authority. From a perspective of both diseases, the major unmet need is uh, the neurodegenerative aspects of these diseases. So from an MS perspective, we have extremely good therapies that target the immune system and suppress the inflammatory aspects of the disease, namely relapses, new lesions on MRI scans. There are some 18 to 20 medications, including generic medications on the market. However, MS, despite adequate suppression of inflammation and the adaptive immune response, there is still an element that is neurodegenerative and that neurodegenerative element underpins the gradual worsening we see across all subtypes of MS. And there is no adequate treatment for that facet of the condition. Similarly in ALS, although uh, this occurs with a different pathogenesis and at a much faster rate, uh, ALS uh, is characterized by the rapid loss of motor neurons. Uh, and that degenerative component uh, leads to an invariable fatal outcome in these patients. And current therapies have minimal to modest effects on slowing of that rate of, uh, of deterioration and loss of neurons. So I suppose this uh, loss of nerve fibres and the neurons that support them is characteristic of both diseases, but clearly with a different pathogenesis. The beauty of the therapies uh, manufactured by Clean, namely gold nanocrystals, is that these uh, crystals target the bioenergetic failure of neurons that is a common end pathway in both diseases and possibly across a number of other neurodegenerative diseases that are still in early phases of testing. I can certainly speak to the clinical trial that I have been involved with. And as I said, I'm an MS physician and uh, our centre in Sydney, Australia was one of the largest contributing centres. Uh, this is a, a phase two trial of nanocrystalline gold therapy in patients with established multiple sclerosis uh, who have visual deficits, so chronic optic neuropathy. We chose the visual deficits because the system, the visual system can be measured or interrogated uh, through clinical, electrophysiological, and structural using MRI aspects. So it's a nice system to test the capacity of a drug to repair the central nervous system. And in MS, gold nanocrystals have been hypothesized to support uh, cells that require a lot of energy that are required to remyelinate or lay down new myelin sheets in this disease, and that is the oligodendrocytes. That laying down of new myelin is an extremely energy dependent process and the gold nanocrystals are thought to support that uh, at a number of levels, but primarily through an increased production of NAD plus within cells. Just, uh, I know you asked me about the trial, but just in terms of the product itself, you know, this comes as a liquid. Uh, it looks like a rosé, tastes like water, but each dose contains about 1.9 quadrillion crystals of pure gold. Not a gold salt, uh, as has been used in other aspects of medicine for many years, but this is pure gold crystals. So this trial uh, essentially uh, looked at stable patients with chronic optic neuropathy and measured uh, a number of outcomes, both visual and composite clinical outcomes, as well as paraclinical biomarkers, namely uh, electrophysiological, we use the visual evoked potential, uh, and MRI to look at structural outcomes. And this was a placebo controlled trial. And in this study, patients who received therapy, uh, either 15 milligrams or 30 milligrams of CNM AU8, the name of the product, uh, showed significant benefits over and above placebo in terms of the primary outcome measure, which was low contrast letter acuity or a change in low contrast letter acuity over a period of 48 weeks. The secondary outcome, which was also 
positive uh, at a statistical level was a composite clinical outcome, namely the MS functional composite score. This is a composite score that comprises uh, a, a test of cognition, the SDMT, a uh, test of uh, upper limb motor function, namely nine hole peg test, test of walking function, which is the time 25 foot walk, and this was a modified MSFC and also incorporated a visual outcome, again, low contrast letter acuity. So these were the primary and secondary outcomes, both of which was positive and, you know, to some extent, surprisingly so, simply because the study was underpowered uh, because we were unable to recruit the full planned cohort of 150 patients due to difficulties uh, imposed on us by the pandemic. Uh, so this was right in the middle of the pandemic and it was quite a complex study to enrol patients into. And so many sites had difficulty enrolling those patients, which required a lot of site visits at a time in Australia where we were very locked down and that Australia was the primary recruiting jurisdiction with a site in the US and another site in Canada. Ultimately, 73 out of the 150 patients were recruited but despite this, uh, the study reached it, its, uh, its goal of showing statistical benefits in both primary and secondary outcomes. So this therapy, if it, the first step is to, to, to prove these outcomes from a phase two study in a phase three study. If we take that, that jump and say, let's say we can uh, recapitulate these findings in a phase three study, um, then we would have really a first in class therapy to treat the progressive elements of MS. Um, which would, how would that translate? Well, that is not going to stop us prescribing the drugs we've currently got on the market. This would be an adjunctive therapy. And the way I would see this is that when I diagnose a patient with MS as an MS physician, I will be treating my patients with highly effective immune therapy of the sort that's already on the market. But concurrently, I would be putting a patient on a, on a therapy that prevents progression. And then we have treated both elements of the disease. And while this is not a cure, you need ongoing therapy, uh, this will allow patients to continue to live normal lives and not have that fear of progression, which most patients with the disease have when they're first diagnosed.